Good morning everyone and welcome to our virtual whole college assembly. I said in my newsletter on Friday that the heart is considered at the centre of a person, at the centre of a person's identity. And you, our students, are very much at the centre of the identity of St Benedict's. To that end, this week, Miss O'Neill is going to be sending out a student voice activity that asks you to give us some feedback on how the experience of home learning is going for you and to answer some short questions so that we can think about how best to support you when the college finally reopens properly. There are lots of things to see and listen to in the assembly this morning and I'm going to start off by handing over to Deacon Richard who is going to lead us in a reflection. Over to you Deacon Richard. Hello and welcome once again to the chapel, whether you're watching this from home with your families, whether you're watching this in school or whether you're watching on your own, uh, welcome to the chapel. Last Friday was um, a wonderful solemnity, the solemnity of the sacred heart of Jesus. Now, When we think of the heart, we think of um, the thing that keeps our blood moving around our body, very important organ. We also refer to the heart in other ways, such as our emotions, how we're feeling. We talk about being having a joyful heart. We talk about having a sorrowful heart. We even talk about having a broken heart. But I also want to think about the heart as the source of love. And that really is the message of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. You see, the Sacred Heart of Jesus is indeed the source of love. And do you know something? Even at the, the well, these moments where there's pandemics uh, are, are around and we've had, we've struggled, some of us, with this whole notion of being locked down, we may have forgotten for a moment or two that we are indeed loved. We're loved beyond our imagination. So I invite you for a couple of moments just to reflect on the great love of Jesus and how we can reflect that love into our world. The images associated with the Sacred Heart of Jesus signify clearly the love that Jesus has for each and every one of us. We see a large heart meant to show the immensity of his love for us. And we notice the flames that indicate that his heart burns for love of each of us. But the image of the sacred heart also indicates that that love comes at a price. We see the cross and the crown of thorns indicating the cost of Jesus' suffering on the cross which brings about our redemption, that in his dying he takes the weight of our sins and wrongdoings, which die with him in order for us to be worthy to enter the kingdom of heaven. This brief summary of the Sacred Heart gives us much to think about, but can I suggest two things? Firstly, how do we respond to that love? Do we respond with gratitude or joy? Or is it possibly indifference or ingratitude? You know, we are free to decide. Another sign of God's great love for us is that he didn't create us as robots. He gave us free will. We are free thinking humans. And if we are grateful, then we need to show it in our lives by sharing and taking Christ's love into the world. 
Defining Christian love is difficult. But let me remind you of one definition. To love is to will the good of the other. And if we do that, if we do will the good of the other, without even thinking about getting anything in return, we really are showing the great love of Christ for all people. I invite you to pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Father, source of all that is good, help us to see others in the way that you see them. Be with us in our daily struggles. And may we always be conscious of your great gift of love that you have for everyone. Amen. Saint Benedict, pray for us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may God hold you in his loving arms this day and always. And may God bless you. Morning, a massive big welcome to you all, our students, our parents, our carers, families and friends. Welcome to our second virtual school, Hall College Assembly. As you can see and hear, we moved from the Manning Hall into the library. We are very glad to tell you that our first virtual assembly has been seen so far 698 times. I have asked my family in Belgium to watch it, so we hit the 700 times. A lot has happened since our last assembly. We are open again. We are a proper college with students. As Mr. Callaghan said, St. Benedict's is more than a building, than textbooks, than whiteboards. It's you, our students. You are the heart of our college. And last Monday, the heartbeat of our college has returned. 42 year 10 students came back. We have three different groups in three different rooms, following three different timetables. I can reassure you that Mr. Cretu, our assistant principal, has been busy over the last weeks organizing this all. Now let's have a look at one of those timetables. The three classrooms are open from 8.30 onwards, where one of the pastoral team, one member of the pastoral team, is welcoming our students. Group one, they started English with Mrs. Bishop. They had a break in uh, the same room, after break, they carried on with maths. They had their lunch break, uh, time in the classroom and time outside the classroom. Then afterwards, it was science. Now, as you can see, those breaks and the lunches are all staggered. And at no point, the different groups have uh, been mixing with each other. In the afternoon, there was some time for study for their options. Now, instead of me telling you how our students in year 10 have experienced the first days back. Let's listen to the year tens themselves. As you can see, we're all back at school thinking of you. Please ring or email if you need us to help you in any way and we look forward to seeing you soon. Who do you say? Who's up there? Who's doing embarrassing? Right. The middle one, so one or and two S's. Anybody? Nancy Pitt, what would you say? The first one. Hello, so this is Mrs. Adonetta and just want to say a couple of things about, or, or three, I don't know, about how it's been since the opening of school for our year 10s. I can't believe how much I have missed teaching. That is definitely one thing about it. Miss teaching, miss um, 
going through things with students, helping them to clarify things that they weren't sure of. Yesterday I was listening to a podcast called The Infinite Monkey Cage and I was really inspired with what they were saying. It was to do with the need for speed. And I was like, I can't wait to share this with the students. And, and that's what I did this morning. So yes, it's been br brilliant. Uh, the kids have been absolutely amazing. I've enjoyed coming back to teach and oh, we all feel pretty safe as well. So thank you. I'm Ava. I've been here for a few days this week and it's been a really great experience being back at school. It helps you get into the flow of school again and really helps you focus on your work. I've got a lot of work done this week and I have spare time a lot as well in the days when we're off school for the school to clean. It's really important that people come here because it just really helps your learning and I wish everyone the best of luck. Hi guys, it's, just, it's great to be back in school. Um, getting some kind of normalcy back to um, the way we do things and hopefully we'll see you all soon. Yeah, I think uh, school is easier for learning because you get to be with teachers and also people who kind of help you as well, so students as well, keep me motivated to do my learning, so yeah, keep safe and yeah, have fun. Okay, it's nice to see you. Um, school has been, it's been great being back at school. And if we do a, a kind of survey, a kind of poll of how the students feel, they much prefer being in school than they do being at home. Um, it's just different. Um, it's been really nice being back in and seeing people. It's been nice being having those direct questions and supporting that way. And that's very nature. School is an interactive place and those social things make it really important um, for all of us. And it's lovely to have little smatterings of that. Lockdown. Lockdown's been okay because I've got my family with me, um, two of whom come to this school. Um, and it's been good. Um, obviously there comes to a point where work at home gets difficult. It's just not the same. Where's the break between being at home and where's the start of being at work? So it's difficult to merge the two together. But it has been okay for me because we're, yeah, I've got my family with me and that's great. Um, I really enjoy being back because not only do I get to interact with my friends but I also get to actually have some teachers who are there to kind of help me when I get stuck and even though at home you can email them it's really nice to be back face to face. My name's Hayden Shepherd and being at school has been a real helpful experience and I've really enjoyed it. It's changed a lot but it's still good to learn here and hope for the best at home. Uh, it was really good to be back and see lessons happening and just try to feel some sort of normality if you call it like that now and i know the students have been very grateful parents have been very grateful as well and like i said we would want everyone to be back in college and we will have them as soon as is safely to do so but for now we're very thrilled to have the students that we have on site um i'm really happy to be back it was a bit weird at first like trying to stay away from everyone but we quickly got into the habit of um, keeping like social distancing and um, it's really helped me to keep motivated and focus back onto schoolwork properly now. Hi, I'm Kirk. Um, to say I've been back is good, I like it. Um, the best thing I'll say for it is um, the face-to-face -face with the teacher is very nice. Um, it helps you learn and um, to feel more confident about um, all the work, so if you're worried about that, then coming back to school is the best thing to do. Um, seeing everyone else is good as well, you, you get to um, interact with them outside and, I don't know, play, play football or something like that, uh, that's nice. I'm really loving being back, it's lovely being back with the kids. I can't deal with the fact that I feel really nervous before I'm going to teach. <laughs> It's really, really nice to be back because there's just some things you can't teach yourself at home. Although the teachers are putting on really good resources, it's just nice to have some face-to-face -face learning that you can really understand properly. I'm actually really enjoying being back at work. Um, it's really good fun to kind of see all the students that are in and really good to see all the staff as well. And what I'm particularly liking is not having to sit in my kitchen whilst my eight-year-old daughter runs around screaming and asking for food whilst I'm trying to do my marking. 
So I'm really looking forward to, uh, to seeing more of you as we get back to school. Bye. Right, as you all see, all of us are grateful, thankful to be back. In the first assembly, we asked you to let us know what you all have been up to. Thank you for the replies and please keep sending in your experiences. Rebecca McDougall, year nine, has been very busy baking cakes and making little pom-pom caterpillars to cheer up her neighborhood. So well done, Rebecca. And as promised, this week a photo of Mr. Thompson, who has been taking lockdown very seriously. A very well done to Lily May Harding in 7S. Lily May graduated at the Essex Children's University just before lockdown. She completed over a thousand hours of extracurriculum activities, gaining extra skills and experience in her own time. Now I'm sure, Mr. Callaghan, this is a great example of striving for excellence. Thank you, Mr. Verhofstadt. Good morning, everyone, from a very sunny St. Benedict's College library. I hope you all had an enjoyable Father's Day and that the students spoiled their fathers. I have got a, a big box of heroes. If anybody wants the cream eggs, just email me and I will post them home to you. Can't stand the things. Um, as we said last week, we had over 230 postcards already sent home. And each week we have the same names coming in. And again, we were just trying to find different ways to promote the really outstanding work that's going on through home learning and has been sent in. So I'm going to take you through over the next few weeks a few examples that we've taken from our school's Instagram pages and share it with the world. Here we have um, in art in year nine they've been exploring buildings and structures and you can see here an amazingly detailed piece of work full of ideas and crea creativity from uh, Carolina in year nine. Keep it up Carolina, really good. It'll be a postcard heading your way soon. In year seven in art They've been looking at Matisse's paper cutouts, being inspired by those, and here we have an amazing collage full of exceptional work from Sophie, Nia, Gabriel, and Liliana, and again, postcards sending uh, be sent home to you for this week. Keep it up. In English, Year 7 have been working on an extended creative writing project called The Village, uh, and here we can see some amazing work sent in by Daniel, who uh, has impressed Mrs. Bishop with his imagination and his ability to write uh, for different audiences and purposes and we look forward to seeing how that project develops over the next few weeks well done daniel and everybody else in year seven who's been working so hard on the village in year eight english students have been developing the skill to read and analyze unseen poetry here you can see a lovely piece of work sent in by gabriel done a great job in terms of embedding quotations and uh, applying subject specific terminology to his analysis and that'll really help gabriel hit the higher levels when it comes to his assessments so well done to all, keep striving for excellence and sending in your work to your teachers and your heads of faculty and next week we'll have a look at some other subjects and some outstanding work there as well. All the best.